Hello, Lizzie here, and today I'm going to show you how to make Sokoa, which is a beautiful little bag. We've got it just here. Um, I've chosen to use like Halloween-y colours, um, and you can see behind me now the theme of uh, September is going to be Halloween-y colours. Um, but of course, I'm going to make it in totally different colours just to see how versatile it is. So with this lovely pattern here, um, we're going to do some modern hexy quilting, um, which is interesting because we haven't covered that before. So you will get full written and pictorial instructions in here and you've got a full pattern if i show you at the back we've got a full pattern for this as well okay so all is not lost you will be guided throughout um, and if you wanted to you can go to my website and download the pattern once it's in the shop and that's lizzycurtis.com so the first thing we need to do is we need to cut out our hexagons of course i've already done some in anticipation of the video and um, all you need to do is cut out your template and then cut your fabric just a wee bit bigger, a quarter of an inch or even a little bit bigger if you wanted to. And you're going to do this in the same way as you'd normally do with traditional um, hexagon English paper piecing. And that is you're going to cover your little piece of uh, card with that fabric, fold those over and then create the most wonderful folded hexagon design. So I'll just get my glue pen. And if we have a look on the overhead, we can see how this is done. It's super, super easy, nothing complicated. So I always put three bits of glue like that and then just fold my edges over like that and make it nice and tight and neat. So keep pushing it over with your fingers just to make sure that that's a lovely straight edge. And I'm going to pop my iron on ready for the next stage. Once we've got it like that, give it a finger press and then with your glue, just put some more glue on the fabric and the card as well. Now this is not permanent, this is just a temporary thing, just so we get a really lovely hexagon. So I'll just bring my mat up here and you're just going to fold those over. And that's your first stage done. And this is just the same as you would do with English paper piecing. I've, I've chosen to use card because I get a, a better fold over, but you might want to just use your, your copy paper. Now you could just use the same template over and over again. I've chosen to cut four, um, so I can do all four at the same time. So there's the ones I've already done here. There we go, those are the four I've already done. So if I get my iron, so all I'm going to do is use my iron just to crease those that fabric over, give it a nice, nice press. And really now that's that's kind of done. So that's my third one. And then the one I've just done with the glue, we'll just undo that now. You don't have to leave these overnight or cool down or anything like that. As long as you've pressed those sides, then you're good to go. So give that a, another little press. And it's worth spending this time doing this preparation for your hexagons. So there's my four hexagons now ready to go. Now, if we look at the bag, um, it's mine's in black, so it's very difficult to see sometimes to see the stitching on this. But with the blue, you'll see it so much more um, when I've machined it, you'll see um, how that looks. But with a modern hexi, what we're doing here is a, it's almost like applique, well it is applique, um, where we're actually stitching across the points. So we're going across the points and on the pattern you have got that grid to show you where to stitch and so you can place them. Now I've included in the pattern a couple of ways of placing those on the front of that bag and that actually is a nice little pocket. You've got a covered button at the front there, you've got a button loop as well, which you can obviously undo to get into the bag. It's a lovely, lovely shape, but actually when you open up the bag itself it's really really roomy surprisingly so surprisingly so but the idea is that the sides fold right in on themselves and the bag should lie flat and that way you, it's the sort of thing that you can actually carry around with you in another bag and then pop out if you need to it's a beautiful little bag so we'll pop that to one side so we've got our four hexes 
and then of course we need our pocket now with the pocket you're going to turn over the top edge a quarter inch quarter inch and top stitch that but we're going to top stitch that in a dark blue but I'm actually going to place my hexes on my grid um, and I'm going to stitch with a light blue because I don't want that stitching to stand out so we need to place our hexes down so if I put it on to the, the camera like this we can see and now you, you can decide where you put your hexes but you'll find that the grid's going to help you um, and you can you can like I say you can place them wherever you want but I, I really wanted to have the two dark colours opposite each other and the two light colours to the side now of course you can make it so they're sort of equal distance between each other and this is the sort of design that I did um, just before or you can do it so the points are coming down like this it's entirely up to you the, the, the great thing about hexagons is there are a lot of choices about how you can lay these patterns out so let's think we can we can even do it like this if we wanted to and lay it out like that it's, it's entirely up to you but I quite like it where it's flat and if you can get the the point of your grid onto the middle of your hexi then you're just about there aren't you with your design so we'll pop those down and all you've got to be mindful of in fact let's square that off like the other one that's quite nice like that I like that all you've got to be mindful of is your quarter inch seam allowance going all the way around now to hold those in place we could use some quilters tape um, because we're just going to stitch these um, straight down onto the, the fabric. So a bit of quilter's tape on the back. Give it a good press. Um, and then just place it down again. I don't know, I'm going to go, I think I'm going to do this now. <laughs> you see, this is what you'll do, you'll change your mind. I know you will. But just be decisive, just do it. Um, and as like I say, this is a lovely little make. So I think you'll be pleased with it once you've popped it together and again we'll just pop that one there and the quilters tape is is available everywhere just uh, google it um, or whatever search engine you use um, quilters tape it's quarter inch this one is a wash away it doesn't have to be a wash away yeah, so I'm going to move that again look just uh, because I can um, it doesn't have to be a wash away. I think there is, um, a, you know, sort of a heat, a heat and solvable one as well. So there's lots of different ones that you can get. But this is this is a cheap and cheerful one. I can't tell you. I think it was about, I think it was about, I don't know, ten pounds for about four, four or five different uh, reels. So there we are. So there's our pattern, and I've stuck that on with uh, quilters tape just to hold it there. Now with the grid. It'll take you diagonally through the points if that's the way you want to go. And obviously you want to place the points on those lines to help you. Um, also, you can go across and down as well. So you get every point covered. Um, but I'm just going to kind of go for it. And just line these up. You can see by the grid whether you're, you're there or not. I think I'm quite happy with that. It's a different sort of design. Yeah. Uh, don't uh, turn over. I've just pressed this ready for stitching, um, but you don't need to turn that over just yet. So a regular stitch. I mean, you can do a longer stitch if you want. Um, just aim for the point of your hexagons. Uh, catch that point down. Make sure that um, you've got uh, those points covered because that's the idea of doing it this way. Because I haven't got my points lined up, that doesn't matter. I'm just going to go through my design and just quilt the whole lot. Um, I'm kind of going off piece a little bit, but the idea is that you catch the points. But we'll, we'll just carry on um, and go through the lines that I've made. I'll follow the grid lines. It'll look much tidier following the grid lines than not. So again, I've chosen a light blue thread because I don't want necessarily these to stand out so just watching my design make sure it's all lined up and of course because we've taped it down it's not going to move so again we've got another grid line here and you'll, you'll find your own way of doing this um, that the idea is that you're catching the six sides of the hexagon down so those folds don't come undone so um, although I must admit I would like prefer to go through the points you don't have to as I'm proving now 
and then we just follow that design and then I'm going through the center as well just to catch those points down now that's optional I've decided I want to do that just so it looks really neat and just be aware of where those points are just if they want to wriggle they will wriggle okay and we've also got if we look at how that looks now we've also got these edges here that haven't been caught now I'm deciding not to do that I've decided just to go across here I think that'll be absolutely fine I'm looking at it and thinking you know what I'm going to do that I am going to go across <laughs> But the choice is yours. Now the idea is that I'm not seeing my stitching, okay? All I'm seeing is the, the hexagons. But the, it's the stitching that's holding the hexagons down. So it's just bearing that in mind. And if you can, try and crisscross through the center of your hexagons, if you can. It's not always possible. But make the pattern your own. So I've drawn with my heat erasable pen the grid. So I'm going to now just iron that away. I just cut my threads off here. So it's all neat and tidy. So with the rest of my stitching now, I should be using um, a dark thread because I'm going to do some top stitching. The, pocket, the top of the pocket is top stitched. So I've got a little catch there, but I'm just going to iron that out. So I'm just removing my heat erasable pens, uh, the, the lines that I made, and also smoothing out my stitching. And give that a steam. It really does help with the steam. So there we are. So that's how it looks now. It looks quite nice, doesn't it? The blue is quite sort of pretty. So I'm just going to change my thread over to navy blue. So I'll be back with you in just a second. So I've prepared the machine, got a navy blue thread because I want to do the top stitching on the pocket and I also want to do top stitching on the two straps and the buttonhole loop. So I've got those there ready to go. So it's a little bit of top stitching to do and this is where you can lengthen your thread a little bit. Um, because I'm using linen, it does press really well um, and it's absolutely perfect for this project. The whole thing is unlined, well not, not unlined, but unstabilized if you like, um, which really sort of adds to the interest of it. And I think that's why it, uh, it folds so well because there's no bulk. So I'm just gonna give these a quick press just to give them uh, a chance to, to actually um, go together nicely and, and nice and flat so the actual straps um, you're folding you're folding the whole length in half so you're going in half and pressing that's giving you a central crease line and then your two edges a bit like bias binding the two edges are coming to the middle um, and then they're folding in half again which gives you a really nice narrow strap and also of course you've got the four layers to give you a nice bit of strength and stability so that's, um, let me show you. So I folded that in half and pressed it in half and I've got my crease line. Then the two outside edges come to the middle and they meet in the middle where the crease line is. And then I folded it again to give me that lovely, lovely crisp edge. And it's about a half an inch. Yeah, it is half an inch. Um, with the button one, it's slightly different. Um, I didn't want the bulk because it's got a curve around the button. So I've ironed in a quarter of an inch on each edge and then I folded in. So um, it's just a little bit of a different technique. Still a nice one to learn to do. Um, and it's useful because there's no bulk there. And this one is slightly narrow, narrower. Um, so it's, uh, it'll go around the, the covered button beautifully. So now I've change my thread I'm good to go with the top stitching now with my top stitching I've done two two layers two lines of top stitching because then it matches the straps so I'm going to do the bottom edge first now you can up your stitch length to about three with this it does speed your machine up so be aware of that and then a second line and I'll show you when I've done 
really close to the edge make it super super neat as neat as you can at any rate take it slowly and always draw a line with a pen and a ruler if you're not comfortable with straight stitching if you think you're going to go a bit wriggly just draw yourself a line so there is the the double row of stitching there really really nice looking so we're going to do exactly the same with the straps so I'll just carry on and do that So we've made the pocket front brilliant. We've we've actually top stitched the little button loop and the two straps, and I've done that in the same navy blue thread just so it stands out, becomes a feature. So with the little pocket, I want to stay stitch it onto one of my pieces. So there's my bag piece. All I'm going to do is place that toe so it's right sides onto. If I hold it up, right side onto the. Um, bag like that so that's how it's going to be and I'm going to just top stitch that on I've changed my thread back to the light blue again I can stitch the rest of the bag with the light blue so I'm just literally following the line about an eighth of an inch around the pocket um, and that means that I'm just securing the two layers together and it kind of allows you to work more freely um, it means that you're just working with one piece of fabric, basically. So a quick mention about my Gold Club. If you haven't joined already, there's no time like the present. Just pop to my website, find the link that says Gold Members Sign Up here. And then you have access to my Facebook weekly events, which is absolutely amazing. My girls love it. And of course, you get the free patterns as well. So if you want more information, there is actually a video on YouTube that you can have a little look at. There we go. Just turn my stitch length back down. Trim your threads, keep those nice and tidy. Okay, so there's my, my pocket attached to the front of my bag. So now we need to piece these together. So you're going to take two pieces, right sides together, and you're just going to stitch down one side. So you're going to stitch from the top here down to the point. And you'll do that with the other pair. Quarter of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch, because this is going to be a main seam. quarter of an inch all the way around, little back stitch just to secure and we've got one half made. So we'll take the other two pieces right sides together, again one seam right from top down to the point. I think uh, you'll agree that it'll look completely different in blues rather than the oranges and blacks. So there's our other half done, like that. So now you're putting right sides together of both pieces, right sides together. So you've got this sort of funny shape going on, but you need to, to secure this really well. So bring your points together. That's your main thing that you need to get right. So nest your points or nest your seams, one going one way, one going another, and put your clip in there. And then just follow the bag around and just pop your pins in or your clips just to hold that all, all together and make sure your top edge, your top edges meet. But it's the point that wants to be right. So also if you stitch where you did the top stitching, so you can see the top stitching you did, you'll see whether you're going to come on the right side of that because you don't want to see that stitching when you turn your bag through. 
so to the bottom and then all the way around like I say you might want to pin all this use your quilting clips just to make sure those edges stay together and then come back up to the top little back stitch there we go so that's our bag body done just turn it through you can clip those seams if you want to but they're not a severe curve so they're going to still curve themselves beautifully anyway now you might want at this stage to get this the seams a press just get them really nice and crispy um, just work those seams and get them um, a really lovely and neat so there's the, the bag body done but we need to attach the straps and the button loop as well so find the center of the back so this obviously is the front find the center of your back panel so it's between seams um, I tend to fold them together match those seams up let me just do that and then I just do a little clip with my scissors like that so we got a little V I don't know if you can see that I think you can if I hold it still you can see that there's a little notch there so fold your button loop in half and bring those edges together like that okay and that center line is where the notch is going to be so again I'll get a, a clip pop those together get them so they're central and just spend a bit of time on that so they are central and if we look at that on the overhead you can see there's a, there's a thread there that's annoying me but I'll, I'll ignore it for the moment um, so you can see how that looks now with your strap you're going to do exactly the same so if I get a couple of clips but this time the strap is going just up to the seam okay make sure it's still lying nicely and straight and again just clip it and so that's what the back of your bag should look like and the front is kind of similar in as much well we're not going to have the button loop but the straps are going to be the same so it just butts up to that first seam so you're only going between seams and again just bring that up I'm going to cut that thread away when it's when you're using a contrasting thread it's so easy to see whether it's wriggly <laughs> so just butt that up against the seam and just clip it now uh, you know me I'm going to actually stay stitch that all the way around so it holds it and it holds it really neat but that's then the the straps in place and then when I put the lining in I don't have to worry about it so um, and I actually I stitch all the way round so that's something that you want, might want to do or just stop when you've completed that, the back or the front but this, this turns out to be such a nice little make and of course you don't have to use hexagons you could, do, you could put anything on the front of that pocket you could do some beautiful embroidery if you've got an embroidery machine if you could make a lovely panel I always have great aspirations of doing that and then of course I run out of, of, of hours so there's the other strap coming up to there I'll just go beyond that and then I'll cut my threads let's just keep tidy so there's all my handles in place like that and the button loop is on the back you can just see it beautifully and like I say give this a really good press so the next thing we need to do is actually the lining now I've already done my lining um, and I've left a turning gap um, let's see if I can find it here we go so there's my turning gap it doesn't matter which seam honestly don't get too het up about that but there's my turning gap in one of the seams there it's about three inches that should be fine so it's right sides together match up your seams so pop your bag inside your bag and match up your seams and again it doesn't matter where they match up it doesn't matter because it's only the turning gap that you're going to see and the whole bag is it's all the same all the way around so just find your first seam and match that up 
Um, I shouldn't worry too much about nesting because you've got your straps there anyway. So that's up to you if you feel that you want to do that. But you've already got some bulk there. So there we go. Let's just work your way around. And it's I think it's at this stage it is important to to line these up. Um, and then just ease your bag in as you as you go around because obviously you've hand cut these you've hand stitched well not hand stitched but you've stitched these together maybe you might be out quarter of an inch or so mm, I shouldn't worry too much about that but you can ease it in on each step oh make sure everything is tucked inside between the layers so you'll get your button loop in there you'd, you'd soon find out when you start to stitch so there's our bags put together the lining and the outer bag so I'm just literally going to stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around and like I say just ease those sides in um, I mean none of this is stabilized so you should be able to do that and it's a slight curve so you you've got a little bit of give Just be aware of your straps as you're stitching and you're just literally stitching all the way around the top, a quarter of an inch thereabouts. And if you wanted to, of course, you could you know hand tack this so it fits together and then you can always adjust the seams you can take the seams in a little bit or let the seams out a little bit so it fits really snug okay so that's our seams done so just find your turning gap there we go and just pull the whole thing through and because this is linen it'll need ever such a good press <laughs> But I choose to use that because at the moment I'm really loving linen. So there's our bag. It looks always looks a little weird, doesn't it, when we turn through? Um, but I'm going to I'm going to stitch my closing gap together. My sorry, my turning gap together. So at least that part is done. Um, now you might I'm using blue thread because I've got that on the machine. But you might want to use obviously a matching thread for your lining. Let's uh, get those seams lined up. And of course you could press this so it's beautifully pressed together. There we go. Let's just trim my threads again. Okay, so this is where you really do need to give this a good press. And actually I would open the whole thing out and give this centre seam a press. So get your straps out of the way, whichever way they're going to go, I'd probably put them towards my bag. Flatten that out and give that seam a really good press there. So you're opening that seam up because we really do need to top stitch that. Um, so I'm going to go away and give that a lovely press. I mean, a really good steam press. And I'm also going to press all my seams as well. So they're all beautiful. And because the next stage is actually quite important where we learn how to fold the edges in. So if you look at the original, it actually should be flat. It should be flat. So it's only when we open up that the sides then come out like that. Okay. So that's how it would look. You can see how the shape of it works, but you need to learn how to get those in beautifully creased. So um, I'm going to press this so it looks gorgeous and then I'll come back to you and show you about that creasing. So I've given the bag a little bit of an eye and I just need to give it actually a good press in just a second. And I've actually made a nice crease on the top there because we're going to top stitch that in a second. Um, but what I have done is get, get the lining nice and neat in there as well. The lining needs to hug the bag. It needs to be right to the edges of the bag. So we need to start folding this. Now what I, what I do is I actually get the sides, these rounded sides here, flat on my mat, on my ironing mat, 
push the lining out to that side as well and get my iron in there. Uh, it, it probably won't be super duper perfect, but try your best to get that iron in there and get that edge flat. Bring the other one over and do the same. Get that so it's nice and flat. Naturally, it's creasing in there, but we want to make sure that's really crispy. We want to make sure that that, that fold inside there goes from the bottom right up to the top beautifully and very, very neatly here. So we'll do the same again. You're going to crease this side. And like I said, I'm going to try and get my hand in there and push that lining right out to the seam there. You're going to give it a good press. I have just done this. Um, and you're going to do the same with the top as well. And you, you can see straight away that's starting to work, but without a really good press, it won't go together um, as flat as, as perhaps I would like it. So all I'm going to do is I've actually got a, a wet cloth. Now, this is a really old fashioned way of steam pressing, but it's it saves marking your fabric with a with a kind of dry iron, even with steam. It could leave you with a, a, a shadow line, a silver line where the iron has been. I don't like that. And especially with linen, we want to be really super careful. So I've got my iron on its absolute hottest setting um, to go through the the just sheeting that I'm using as my ironing cloth and I'm giving that a good press letting that steam sink into the fabric and you'll see the difference it makes you really will it's worth doing this it's, it's like I say it's quite an old-fashioned way you want to make sure those points are beautiful they're not quite as I would like but we'll carry on and just make sure that that heat and that steam goes through all of those layers. I haven't put the button on yet. Um, the button would really get in the way if I had done that. And you can see the steam coming up. But look at the difference. That is lying beautifully flat. It really is. They remind me of the, the bellows that you get with fires. Um, and also you could concentrate on the top as well. Um, just make sure those folds sit really nicely on the top there. Get your straps out, pull them straight. Um, get this all beautiful. The idea of this bag is that it is really neat. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, when we're in a hurry, this isn't the bag to make when you're in a hurry. You want to really concentrate on every step and get it beautiful. It's, it, uh, yeah, I, I see. Obviously, it's important to me, isn't it? Otherwise, I wouldn't be saying. Um, and again, just steam all that back. Make sure that steam goes all the way through. It really does make a difference. And now you can see with the bag, it's absolutely super flat. My points could be better, but for the purpose of the demonstration, we will carry on. And look at that, that is hanging exactly as I would want it to hang. But, but on the other hand, <clears throat> excuse me, we can actually open that up and, and look at the crease, look at that beautiful crease created using that steam. And that's exactly how you want it to be. OK, um, when going to, finishing off now, all we're going to do is top stitch around the top of the bag there. Bring the loop around and then we've got a covered button. Obviously, I've used a cover button, the same fabric as my bag, but you could, of course, use a matching button that you might have had in your stash for a little while. And you're just going to stitch it down. Now you can go by the pattern. There's a, a little marker on the pattern where the button could go. Or I'm just going to judge by bringing the loop down. If I just hold that up, bringing the loop down, it's going to fall out, isn't it? Um, and attaching it to the front of my bag. And that's the bag made. So let's have a look. We've got the Halloween star bag, if you like, um, with the lovely loop, black with orange top stitching and the orange sort of shading of the hexagons there. And this is called modern hexes. OK, so um, then making it in the blue and I will stitch this on. <laughs> there we go. With the blue, it looks really modern and fresh, doesn't it? Completely different. It just shows the different things that you can do. So this is Sequoia. Uh, I think it's absolutely fabulous name. It's actually Native American for Sparrow, which I think is beautiful. So this is a download available on my website, lizzycurtis.com. Or if you had joined the Gold Club, this actually this pattern's actually free. So I hope you make absolutely loads. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>